John Madden was one of the greatest head coaches in NFL history. After taking over the Oakland Raiders in 1969, Madden led the team to the AFC Championship 7 out of his 10 years coaching, and also won a Super Bowl. After retiring from coaching at a young age, John became one of the greatest color commentators in sports history, and was the voice of football, along with the late Pat Summerall for decades. Right before 2021 came to an end, Madden passed away. Just after Fox released the great documentary All Madden, which John was able to watch and enjoy with his family on Christmas Day. Not only was John an incredible coach, broadcaster, and person, but he also helped pioneer one of the most iconic sports video game franchises ever created. May he rest in peace. While today, the name Madden is synonymous with football video games, that had to start somewhere. In his teenage years, Trip Hawkins, who would go on to be the eventual founder of Electronic Arts, was obsessed with football. He created his own replica of the Stratomatic Paper and Dice football game, with the hopes of it becoming a big hit. He wanted to create a football simulation game that could be as complex as the real sport, but his first attempt was just too complex to take off. He hoped that future technology, such as the computer, would help him reach his vision. While attending Harvard, Hawkins created a prototype of his football simulation on a PDP-11 mini computer. The program he created was so realistic, it actually predicted nearly the exact score of the 1974 Super Bowl, calculating a result of 23-6 in favor of the Miami Dolphins, while the actual result was 24-7. In 1982, Hawkins founded Electronic Arts, a video game company and he claimed the real reason he started the company was because he wanted to make computerized versions of games like Stratomatic. While working on his first simulation football game for EA, he approached his favorite NFL player Joe Montana to be the cover athlete. Unfortunately, Montana had already made a deal with Atari for Joe Montana football, so Tripp went to his second choice, then Cal coach Joe Cap. Cap demanded too much in royalties for the partnership to work, however, which led Tripp to his third, but most important choice, John Madden. In 1984, Hawkins approached Madden and scheduled a meeting with him, which had to happen on a train while John traveled. Famously, Madden had a fear of flying, so he would take train rides across the country for his coaching and broadcasting career. When pitching the game to John, Hawkins told him the game would be a sophisticated football simulation, but they needed John's endorsement and knowledge of football to help make the game. Madden knew absolutely nothing about computers at the time, but he agreed as it sounded like a great idea to him. Madden envisioned the game as a tool for teaching the sport of football. For the rest of that train ride, Tripp and the game's producer listened to Madden teach them all about football plays and strategies and how they could be applied to the game. EA hired Bethesda, yes, the eventual developer of games like Fallout and Skyrim, to finish what Tripp had started. But the company stopped working on the game after a year in sued EA, which complicated development. Originally, the game was going to be a 7 on 7 Tech Mobile clone, but John Madden was extremely against that idea. He was quoted as saying, If it's not 11 on 11, it's not real football. That was a deal breaker. If it was going to be me, and going to be pro football, it had to be 22 guys on the screen. If we couldn't have that, we couldn't have a game. Although technology just wasn't there yet, Hawkins knew the game needed to be 11 on 11 to get John's endorsement. There was a time when both EA and John expected the game to be cancelled. However, after a very long development, John Madden Football finally released in 1988. If you want to hear more about the game's development and initial vision, I actually interviewed Trip Hawkins myself, and you can find that interview in my documentary on the fall of EA Sports. John Madden Football released initially for the Apple II computer in 1988. This is the original Madden game, which is a bit confusing because there were other games that released with the exact same name. The game was updated and improved in 1989 and released on MS-DOS and Commodore computers, and then EA made a new game from the ground up with a more arcade-style feel to it for the Sega Genesis in 1990. In 1991, the Genesis game was then tweaked and ported to the SNES. All of these games were titled John Madden Football. Of course, this wasn't the last time different games were released under the same name in the Madden series. Most Madden titles would release on multiple devices with slight differences. Even today, the most recent Madden, Madden 22, is available on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series S and X. 
with the older gen and PC versions lacking features and gameplay changes. In the early to mid 2000s, Madden titles had an insane number of ports. For example, Madden 07 released on over 10 different devices, from the Wii to the Xbox 360 to the PlayStation 2 to the Game Boy Advance to the DS to the PSP to even flip phones. First, let's focus on the original computer versions of John Madden Football. What's interesting is that the internet has very little to say on these versions of the game. Most videos or articles talking about the first Madden tell the same story as I did, but then only talk about the Genesis version when it comes to reviewing the actual game. It turns out that the original 1988 release was actually a more complex and thorough game. At the time, the Apple II was an old and aging computer, so getting 22 players on the field in-game was an incredible achievement. EA had to work very hard to get the game to live up to John Madden's standards. The initial game was held back a bit due to the computer's power, so it was ported to MS-DOS and Commodore computers the very next year with important improvements. The game opens with John himself bursting through a chalkboard in a similar fashion to his beer commercials. The menus are navigated with a mouse and lack music. It feels very barren by today's standards. The game also did not feature the NFL license, and this would be the case until Madden 95 released on the Sega Genesis. While most players are named by their position, such as fullback, there are some names based on a player's real-life counterpart, such as Joe Idaho for Joe Montana, Danny for Dan Marino, and Fridge for William Perry. Team names were also like this, for example, the 49ers were called the Aiders, and the Miami Dolphins were called Vice Squad. The only team to use the name of a city was Oakland, due to John's history with the franchise and him having a soft spot for the city. Each player had a rating from 1 to 9 for various attributes such as speed, durability, and more. This game didn't have a lot of fluff. It didn't seem like anything special until you actually dived into it. If you tried playing this game today, you'd probably feel overwhelmed and confused, and perhaps frustrated. It wasn't meant to be a football game everyone could pick up and play, but instead a true football simulator. There was a very large selection of plays to choose from, and it felt like a chess match. Every decision mattered. Despite having over 80 plays for each side of the ball, the game also featured creative play, where you could draw up your own plays and test them out in-game. This was a staple for Madden games up until around a decade ago, when the feature was removed and never seen again. When calling a play, all you see are the players on the field in formation, rather than the three-play selection screen we're used to today. You had to manually type in the play with your keyboard using numbers, and to see all plays by formation, you had to double-click the screen to bring up a separate menu. While it was complicated for newcomers, once you got the hang of it, the result was magical. What really separated John Madden Football on computers from the later home console releases was the game's customization. Despite being a game from the late 80s, users could change everything. You could create your own team, change player names, numbers, and attributes, edit all existing teams, change the quarter length, weather, field options, opponent play calling styles, and even print out your own created plays and team rosters. For such an old game, this was very impressive. Gameplay in this version was very rudimentary, as you simply guided the direction a player ran with your cursor. There was no juke or spin button, the player just went in the direction of your choosing. Passing the ball was pretty cool, as you got to choose exactly where to place the ball, similar to Retro Bowl, a mobile game I highly recommend. You would move your mouse towards where you wanted to throw, and then time your click to a meter. The game's AI was very smart for the time, and compared to the next several home console versions of Madden, it was actually better. While the game looks pretty rough graphically, that's really only during passing plays or kickoffs. During runs, the game zooms in a bit, showing a more detailed view. Also, you have to remember how difficult it was getting 22 players on the field at once. That itself was impressive enough, but the gameplay actually being good made this a classic. Despite the game being a pretty realistic chess match of football with plenty of customization options to add a replay value, it was clear at the time that in order to reach a large audience, a more approachable game needed to be created. John Madden Football for the Sega Genesis was exactly that, an arcade-leaning football game that was very simple and easy to play. When most people refer to the first Madden game, they mean this one, even if it's technically not the first and actually worse in some areas. The game is not even close to as customizable as the original, but graphically it looked much better. 
and gameplay had more user control. It had 16 generic teams, players didn't have names or numbers, and playbooks were a lot smaller, however. But the game was a lot of fun and a huge success. While dumbing down a game to appeal to a wider audience will anger diehard fans, it paid off for Madden and gave EA their flagship video game. Easily, the best part of the Genesis version was controlling your players. In every other football game up to this point, players moved in straight lines and stopped on a dime. In this game, you could turn, curve up the field, and even slow down with movement that resembled real life. Players could drop open passes or sometimes make catches when surrounded by defenders. Almost anything could happen, and you'd rarely see the same outcome twice, just like in real football. Compared to the original version of the game, it was much easier and the AI was easier to beat, but it also felt better to play. It was more polished, and using a controller was much better for a football game than using a mouse and keyboard. You could also control defense in the Genesis version, unlike the original, by clicking a button to switch between players. If there was a fumble, for example, you could switch to the nearest defender to try and pick it up. You could pressure the quarterback, and the game was advanced enough to have organically developed pockets that would break down and cause the quarterback to move to buy more time. The game definitely wasn't as realistic as the original version, but it was more accessible and still light years ahead of other football games on the market in certain areas. EA had only expected to sell around 75,000 copies, but instead they sold over 400,000 units. Due to the popularity and success of the game, EA continued releasing Madden titles every year and eventually acquired the NFL license, resulting in the name we recognize today, Madden NFL. John Madden's dream of creating a tool to teach and educate those who enjoyed the sport came true, and today the Madden NFL franchise is one of the most profitable in the entire world. Regardless of your opinion on modern Madden games, it's clear that the original game was an incredibly important one that changed sports gaming forever. John pushing for 11 on 11 gameplay was pivotal in pushing the genre forward, and EA became one of the largest companies in the world, expanding far beyond sports games. Not many games have a legacy that strong, and it simply adds to the legend that is the incredible life of John Madden. Thanks for watching.